Good morning, everyone. Um, this is uh, the second session of the, um, of the workshop on specialized topics in wind generation, wind power generation, 2021. Uh, just uh, before I invite Gustavo Hernandez to, to start his presentation, let me give you a very, very brief uh, bio. Uh, Gustavo Hernandez will talk about the influence of spatial resolution in mesoscale modeling to reproduce wind power production in southern Mexico. And Gustavo, um, Gustavo Hernandez is a PhD student in the Wind Energy Group at uh, IERUNAM. He holds an MSc in Energy Engineering focused on wind energy resource assessment and numerical weather prediction models. Currently, Gustavo's research interest, interests are in the characterization of mesoscale simulations for different regions of Mexico and the production of wind energy forecasts with high performance computing. So uh, please, uh, Gustavo, um, can you start your presentation? Mm. Yes, uh, sure. Thank you, Dr. Eduardo. I will start sharing my screen. Um, okay. And may, may can can you confirm me if that you can? Yes. Yes. We we can see your presentation now. Okay. Good. So the work I'm going to present today is, as already mentioned. Um, is the influence of spatial resolution on mesoscale modeling to reproduce wind power production in southern Mexico. Um, this work uh, was in collaboration with the University of Reading. And um, it, it was um, the work I developed as a master's student. So uh, the motivation of this uh, work is Firstly, to validate a technique to assist in the early stages of wind resource assessment using uh, basically numerical weather prediction models. Um, we consider that um, to improve the knowledge of uh, wind behavior and its causes in the, in, the, in the region, which is the Tehuantepec Isthmus, um, it's very important as uh, mostly 45% of uh, national wind power production is uh, installed there. And this is uh, numbers of 2019, um, given by the Mexican Wind Energy Association. So we will focus the, this, this study in this area, mostly uh, near the Gulf of Tehuantepec and um, in, in the southern part of it. So the objective of this work is to are to compare the wind speed and wind power output of a wind turbine installed in the Tuantepec Isthmus with the results of the Wharf mesoscale model and Meratura analysis at different resolutions. Um, these resolutions are equivalent to a grid spacing of 50 kilometers for Meratura uh, analysis and one three. 15, 17, and 17 kilometers for the WARF model. And the second objective is to determine the amount of significant information in terms of indices related to wind energy production at different resolutions of the numerical grid. Um, these indices are mainly wind speed and capacity factor. Um, I want to talk about first about the wind speed measurements we were able to to analyze. And uh, firstly, um, this is a measure, these measurements are from a wind turbine uh, with um, 80 meters height. Uh, the measurements are at hop height. So uh, in, in, in the plot, you can see that we have maximums. Uh, well, this, this data is for 2016, a uh, whole year. And we, we, we get maximums at, uh, January, February, and at the end of the year also, um, December mainly. Um, 
the direction of the wind speed comes mainly from the north northeast uh, and it, it it has a, a strong component in, in that direct that comes from that that, that direction um, the data is uh, uh, every has a, a temporal resolution of 10 minutes and for the analysis we will we average it uh, at hourly resolutions so um, then I want to talk about the Meraturi analysis, which is a product uh, from the from NASA um, that uh, uh, runs uh, well. It it assimilates. It's a model um, that assimilates observations throughout the world, and it then integrates them in the in an homogeneous mesh of global circulation. So this uh, data set is available with the uh, data from 1980 to the present time. So in the figure, you can see uh, an example of how could it uh, be visualized that this uh, global grid, uh, it has uh, horizontal um, uh, grid spacings and also vertical grid spacings. So uh, the data set that we used is uh, 0.5 uh, degrees in latitude with 0. Uh, 0.625 degrees in longitude. This is equivalent to a 50 kilometers um, resolution in latitude for, for, for our latitude uh, in this work. So um, also the, the data set that you use contains U and V velocities that are the components of wind speed, the horizontal components of wind speed. And we, we got uh, these components at 2, 10, and 50 meters uh, with an hourly resolution. Then uh, we got also data from the WARF model that we run. Um, this, this model is a mesoscale model that uh, yeah, runs and, um, the equations that describe fluid dynamics. Uh, such as uh, the conservation of momentum, uh, conservation of mass, conservation of energy, among others. Um, these equations are uh, programmed and integrated with numerical methods such as range of Kutte. And this, uh, in this discretization and this uh, integration of equations and then uh, um, put in a C-grid, uh, Arakawa C-grid, so that it's uh, illustrated in the in the figure at the right. Um, then all the processes that cannot be uh, resolved by these equations due to the resolution and the the special um, development of these processes, mainly because they are smaller than the grid spacings in use, um, are parametrized. Uh, this is um, par the parameterizations are the uh, equations uh, that can uh, be approximated uh, for these processes and are not explicitly resolved in, in the mesoscale equations that, that I mentioned before. So some of the processes that are parameterized are the surface microphysics, uh, the boundary layer, uh, radiation that comes uh, to, the, to the earth and comes out uh, to the space, and uh, cloud formations, among others. Um, well, all, all these equations and all these uh, parameterizations are then applied in, in a domain, uh, which is uh, a geographical area defined uh, in, in the configurations. And um, this allow us, allow us to, to define also initial, uh, initial and uh, border conditions to start the model and um, be able to, to start solving the, the equations. So in our case, the uh, work simulations got uh, the, the initial conditions from the NSEP final analysis. And we got uh, also uh, boundary lateral conditions every six hours. In the figure, you can see uh, the nested domains that we used uh, to run this case. 
uh, the larger domain is uh, uh, 75 kilometers per 75 kilometers grid, and then the 15 kilometers uh, grid. Then in orange, there, there is a three kilometer per three kilometer width, and the smaller uh, uh, square is in green, uh, which represents the area covered by the uh, a discretization of one kilometer per one kilometer. So uh, for these uh, domains, in each, in each domain, we obtain U and B velocities at 10 meters height, and the first uh, layer of pressure which is both the 80 meters height, which is the hub height. So uh, in order to, to, to be able to interpolate, we got the uh, next layer above that, that height, which is about uh, 86, kilo, 86 meters. Mm. Well, um, for the 75 kilometers uh, grid, we got an hour, we got a three hourly resolution and for the rest of the grids, we got a narrowly resolution. So the methodology that we follow, um, I want to talk about first about uh, the measurements, which is in the upper part of the diagram. Uh, the measurements that we got at hub height were from wind speed and with power production uh, at 10 minutes resolution. We averaged them at one hour resolution and uh, we were uh, to, to in order to compare them with a model's uh, results. Uh, then in, in, the, in the lower part of the diagram, we get a, a little um, methodology to in, in, in order to extract the information of models and get time series because all the data from models are um, given as a mesh, uh, a th three D mesh. So uh, first, we uh, perform a uh, horizontal linear interpolation. Then, uh, for MERA2, we uh, extrapolated uh, with the two 10 and 50 meters uh, uh, well, uh, results of uh, velocities. We extrapolated to 80 meters. And for WARF, as I said, uh, we interpolated uh, to 80 meters. Then uh, we perform a bias correction, which is a statistical correction in order to decrease the and, and, and to avoid uh, um, the models uh, inaccuracies and and possible um, and, 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 and avoid possible um, sh um, results that could be. Uh, that, that could be wrong, but given by the, the pure uh, performance of models in terms of the, the how well um, the, the, they, they can um, um, subtract uh, data from observations, the assimilation of data in MERA2, the, um, the equations that are not necessarily uh, expressing the reality. So, in order to avoid this um, already mentioned uh, possible errors, we perform a statistical correction. Then we got uh, the time series of wind speed and to with an hourly resolution, and we performed a power curve fit. So, this power curve fit is uh, an approximation uh, with an error function. Uh, based on measurements of wind power and wind speed, we perf we we used an uh, an an error function uh, to be able to simulate wind power production in the next next stages. So basically, our uh, the analysis uh, is based on a correlation analysis, uh, then a reproduction of of how well uh, the grids can uh, reproduce capacity factor. And then a frequency analysis to see uh, what is the information or the variance that these grids are 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 giving uh, are, are giving to us. So uh, the simulated uh, in, in this plot you will see the simulated and observed wind speed in the left uh, right in the left side uh, you will see uh, the time series of February um, in 
in of the one kilometer width in in blue you you can see the the raw da data that is given by Worf, and uh, in green you can see the um, observations in the right side you will see the um, MERA2 data which uh, also in, in green it has the observations and in blue the raw data of MERA2 the effect of a bias correction is just that that um, we will uh, uh, that, that we will be able to compare uh, wind speed measurements with a certain degree of reliability so in both cases you can see that the adjustment and the deviation and the, the bias that a time series could have uh, is avoided so um, this this uh, uh, methodology we perform it to the all the all the grids of board and mera too also in these plots we uh, also um, we can see the deviation that uh, data had before bias correction which is in in the dotted uh, lines in red and the continuous line in red is the well the, the red lines are the um, um the a linear uh, um, approximation of the of the performance of the models so in red in in, in black you have uh, uh, an identity line just to to mark how well the models uh, perform so basically uh, all the models have these uh, two spots that represent a bimodal distribution so uh, the models are able to to reproduce that bimodal dis distribution which is characteristic of that region of mexico so in the left side uh, we have the one kilometer wharf uh, width with a correlation of 0 0.9, 0 0.91. And in the right side, you, you are seeing the mirror to wind speed distribution with a correlation coefficient of 0.88. So uh, basically, the mirror two and wharf at 75 kilometers had this uh, bias to underestimate uh, wind speed observations. However, uh, the smaller grids have the deviation to the other side which is like a, an overestimation of wind speed measurements so uh, to illustrate better um, the performance of uh, the simulations uh, the, in these tables you can see the in the left side the original data and the mean um, absolute error and the correlation in another column in green, I, uh, I, I, I put in green the, the values that are uh, very similar and which performs the better. So for example, um, the one hourly uh, time series, uh, the mean absolute error of that uh, time series has the best performance with the 15 kilometers and the three kilometers width. So for example, what one could say, well, uh, at least you you don't have to run wharf at one or two kilometers width, um, because wharf at fifteen kilometers is performing good. But still, we don't have a good correlation with the original data without bias correction. So if we look at the right table uh, with the bias corrected data, uh, this helps a lot the models to perform better. This correction makes the wharf uh, at 15 kilometers perform better with a with a similar uh, correlation coefficient and similar maybe uh, mean absolute errors. So um, in the next stages, um, after the, the power production that I will explain in a moment, uh, we will uh, uh, try to explore uh, if it's if it's necessary to run wharf at three or one kilometer or is it just good with 15 kilometers or maybe three kilometers but at this point we can say clearly what could be the best so now um, 
before going to, to the next stages, I want to talk about wind power observations and how we perform the power curve fit. So in the red line, uh, the power curve fit uh, is um, illustrated. The dashed uh, red line is just to illustrate uh, the wind speed uh, that the wind turbine could in, in theory uh, start to produce after a wind speed of uh, 26 uh, meters per second or higher uh, is uh, measured. For example, if we at some point in, in, in the operation of the wind turbine, uh, we got a higher uh, wind speed of uh, higher than 25, uh, the wind turbine stops uh, operating. So in order to start operating again after these high speeds, uh, we we will wait to to a wind speed of 20, 21 uh, meters per second. So basically, uh, in the in the the dots that are in in the plot are the measurements, um, the capacity factor, which. Uh, and the wind speed uh, measurements in in, a, in, a, in the same plot. So we got uh, two spots, one uh, between zero and five uh, meters per second, which is uh, not producing a lot of uh, power production. And then uh, the, there is a slight spot in between 10 and maybe 17 meters per second, uh, which is uh, producing all, all, all the important uh, power production for this wind turbine. We also had some spread data, which is normal for wind turbines in operation. And we also had this uh, tail at the end of the wind, uh, wind power curve. So um, the colors, uh, as uh, well, I mentioned, but um, maybe it can, it can be inferred that colors uh, are the probability of occurrence of this uh, to, to wind speed and wind power production. So we got the, these two spots, so that's uh, really important. And we perform a, a brief uh, wind power correlation, which in which two, these two states uh, are spotted. As I mentioned before, this can be clearly seen uh, in, now in this plot. In the left side, uh, there is the one kilometer breadth. And in the right side, the, this is the uh, mirror to grid. So both models have this um, like um, like performance with two states of operation. One um, with a low uh, capacity factor production, uh, almost uh, zero, with a, uh, a high uh, high uh, a lot of values uh, are near zero. But then we got in the other in the other corner we got a, a spot that produces and it's all almost working at at, at full capacity the, the wind turbine. So um, also we got a correlation of 0 0.87, 0 0.83, which is good. It's not too much deviations from from the real wind power production. Um, well. In this in this uh, slide, I want to illustrate how well um, the models can reproduce uh, the capacity factor or the real capacity factor. So um, I, I I will say it again: we got the wind speed observations and we got the wind power measurements. From models, we got the wind wind speed time series and this. Uh, wind speed time series um, were applied to the to the power curve fit, and we obtained uh, time series of capacity factor to compare uh, how well they can they could reproduce the, the 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 real capacity factor. So the real capacity factor for this wind turbine is thirty two point five, uh, and the other uh, and the and the models are able to reproduce. To reproduce it uh, to certain extent, um, they overestimate the the power production, but still uh, they are they are uh, within a certain range of error. 
So we got a, a, a real uh, good approximation with this. Still, we got uh, an error, but it's an error that we can measure and we can take in account. So for 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 future students. So now I will talk about um, the frequency analysis that we perform. So in order to to say what are the differences uh, between uh, a good uh, or, 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 a, or, or a, uh, a run of the simulations that is valuable for, for a study or valuable, valuable for, for uh, analysis, a future analysis, we have to say what are the chances of the models that are able to reproduce the um, wind speed measurements at all time scales. This is what I'm saying is that uh, in the in 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 these plots, uh, we are uh, watching the the power density or or like a power spectrum. So, if we, in, in the in the in x axis, we can see the frequency, which is in cycles per hour, and we got in the red in the right side in the left side the observations then the warp one kilometer width in the middle and at the right the mirror to 50 kilometers width so in order to to say what is the variable variable width and how uh, it can reproduce the periodicities of observations um, we use the uh, an, an, a model that is used in climatic as uh, time series. This uh, this model is the red noise uh, model, which is like a white noise, but that decreases due to um, that due to the predominance of low frequency fluctuations in uh, climatic processes. So instead of having a, a continuous line and horizontal line in a like a, in a white process, we get this curve uh, with a red noise process. So uh, also to to be able to to identify which are real periodicities and which are maybe just uh, background noise, uh, we got this uh, ninety five uh, confidence level in in above the continuous red line, uh, orange line, and uh, the 90.9 uh, confidence level, which is the, uh, the confidence level that we will use to say which uh, periodicities or which frequencies are statistically, statistically significant and could be taken as a uh, periodicity relevant for, for, for wind power production. Uh, this could represent a physical phenomena. For example, in the observations, we got a daily, a, a daily component, a de, an important com component, which is uh, 24 hours, then uh, an, another component at 12 hours, and then uh, the last component and at eight hours. These are marked uh, uh, with the uh, green spots, and in the next slide, in, in the next, uh, power density uh, spectrums um, there is a uh, the, the, there are the same uh, green spots at, at the at the same places as, as observations so as we can see um, there is a similar uh, shape of uh, the power density spectrums and also for wharf and here i only illustrate the the smaller width but in all of all, all grids of wharf, it has this extra component at, at six hour. Uh, we uh, hypothesize that is uh, due to the retrieve of uh, boundary conditions every six hours. Maybe this is uh, affecting uh, this periodicity. So, um, but anyway, we got the a similar reproduction of the periodicities. We also. Uh, uh, the models are also able to reproduce a, a, a small, a, a slight gap that is between seven days and twenty-four hours, and for Mira two, uh, also reproduces the periodicities, but 
uh, as at the daily scales with we, we see that uh, variance or, or the power in the power density starts to decrease uh, above uh, below the, the red noise level so uh, this will happen uh, uh, with mera to the wharf and kilometer uh, one kilometer uh, three kilometer and 15 kilometer grids are similar and we start to see a slight decrease uh, um, when we see at, at uh, periodicities uh, shorter than six hours, for example, at three hours, we maybe in the 15 kilometer grid, we start uh, 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 to see a slight decrease, but not as uh, evident with MERA2. So this same analysis, we made it with a capaci the capacity factor time series. And we, we also uh, uh, were able to reproduce the two uh, main periodicities at 24 hours and 12 hours uh, with the graph uh, grids. However, with MERA2, we saw the same effect of uh, the, the decrease of information or variance in time series for the so daily scales, daily scales uh, also. So we, we will start uh, seeing what uh, could be the effect of the use of a grid uh, compared to another. So in order to be able to compare the 75 uh, kilometer grid, we performed an analysis, but with all the time series and a three hour resolution. And basically, we got the, the same, uh, the same reproduction of periodicities with WARF uh, with some variations, uh, some uh, higher, some shorter, but there, the, there is the information. So I think the, the most important uh, thing to remark here is that uh, even if it's an, a, a longer uh, sampling, uh, we get also this decrease of information with MERA2. The one uh, kilometer and the three kilometer, the one kilometer width and the three kilometer width. Uh, are behaved this almost the same and uh, high grids start to decrease. Finally, with capacity factor, we get uh, similar results as with hourly time series. Uh, we got uh, also differences in periodicities, but uh, all the all the um, main energy uh, components are able to, to, to be reproduced. So also uh, in, in the, the MERA2 uh, grid has a proof performance in, in this reproduction. We, we can see clearly that uh, the periodicities market in green are not completely reproduced. And in, in, in shorter periods, this is at the right rightmost part of the plot, we can see that there is a, a complete decrease of, of this variance, we can say. So in conclusion, the, the conclusions that we get from this study is that uh, we can, uh, we, we models were able to reproduce um, with accuracy wind speed dynamics and uh, its distribution. Um, we were able to develop an effective methodology to get a capacity factor uh, derived from wind speed time series. So we get uh, from models which with uh, uh, wind speed velocities, we were able to produce um, capacity factor time series, which are uh, pretty similar or um, very close uh, uh, to, to real uh, power production. Uh, also, uh, I, I think that the, uh, most, the, the most important conclusion here is that there is a clear relation between the grid size and the variance uh, present uh, or, uh, in high frequencies. Uh, the decrease of information uh, in, in, the, in the bigger grids are uh, in the high frequencies. Almost all the all the models are able to reproduce the variance for uh, long periods, uh, like seven days or larger. So I think uh, the 
added value of a uh, high resolution is in, is in here that uh, high uh, frequencies or let's put it in another way um, daily and sub daily um, time scales are reproduced well with uh, high resolution grids. So for for other uh, time uh, time resolutions, the, all, all the grids can perform uh, relatively well. So also we get uh, from the table of uh, that I presented with the mean absolute error and the and, and the, the frequency analysis, we can conclude that high, the highest resolution is not always the best choice. Uh, this is because for the one kilometer uh, grid and the three kilometer grid performance almost uh, uh, equal. So it could not it could not be worthy uh, to run a um, uh, one kilometer grid when a three kilometer grid can give uh, similar information with less uh, computing time. Also, uh, as I uh, related with uh, as with the, uh, the the conclusion that I, I said before, the choice of grid depends on the analysis to be made. So, for example, if you, we are going to make an analysis that uh, involves daily or sub daily phenomena or daily or sub daily uh, time scales, we will be interested in in the correct reproduction uh, at these time scales. So, uh, a, a high resolution uh, with the rough model could be could be valuable and could be a good choice. So if uh, we are going to perform um, an analysis that has a uh, time scale, or, or we are going to analyze time scales longer than daily or two, two days, uh, yes, than than daily, larger than one day uh, of uh, temporal resolution. Maybe we can avoid uh, the the, the the time and the computation time to to perform these high resolution simulations, and maybe we can we can stay with a, a mirror to reanalysis, which is uh, publicly available and it's only uh, and it's ready to download the data, and we we avoid these mesoscale simulations. So I think uh, this is our this. These conclusions are, are, are the most important, and uh, I thank you for your attention. I... Thank you very, thank much, you very much, Gustavo, for, uh, for your presentation. And we do have some time for uh, questions or, or comments from the audience. Uh, I would invite participation from the audience. Uh, please um, raise your hands or um, or write them in the chat so that uh, Gustavo can answer your two questions. Uh, okay, I think that there can uh, see any any questions or comments, but I do have one. If you can, uh, Gustavo, go to the to the uh, performance plot. Yes. Um, which uh, one? It, it, it's um, the one in which you, you showed the performance of the, the that one exactly. Oh. Yes, I, I'm very curious um, if I understand correctly the spot, the light spot that is uh, near the shoulder of the of the curve is. Co corresponds to the um, winds that are uh, uh, mm, the, the second uh, mode of the, of the winds that you showed us in, in previous plots. Um, let me let me see if I got the, the, the question right. Um, if it, the, the, the question is if this two the, the 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 light spot and the 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 spot in the in the downside of the of, of the plot are uh, okay are, are illustrated also in the other exactly do they correspond to this bimodal uh, distribution of velocities yes certainly they they have a, a relation um, we we get uh, this 
uh, wind speeds with low, these low wind speeds, uh, and then we, we got uh, an, another uh, high wind speeds. Like uh, these two spots can be associated, also uh, as you said, with uh, the bimodal distribution. So uh, this is this is a uh, really interesting <laughs> behavior of the wind turbine because there, there there's a lot of, of, of wind speed that are in the in, in in the low in the low production uh, uh, area and the, but 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 uh, this wind turbine has a high capacity factor uh, only with this um with, with this slight spot which is the other like concentration of data the other spot of data in the bimodal distribution it's because I, I think that that would be very very interesting if there's a correlation between the two. I, I'm not uh, entirely sure I understand why, but uh, but it would be very interesting. Well, yes, uh, we, if, if, if we we look uh, uh, to the to the to the ranges that are in the in the rated power of the power curve, which is let's say uh, then. 10 to 20 meters per second. And if we look uh, to the to the to the bank, to the distribution of data, we got that this spot is in the in the in the same region of 10, 10 and 20 to 20 meters uh, per second. So this uh, lighter spot is uh, the the it has the the, the most the most of the power production in the wind turbine. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, uh, Osvaldo Rodriguez uh, wants to to make uh, to ask a question, please. Uh, yes. Osvaldo, go ahead. Thank you, thank you, Eduardo. Thank you, Gustavo, for your presentation. Um, you you are using uh, Mera two, which is you you are using uh, to make an analysis in a retro retrospective uh, perspective. And also, you are using this same strategy to you uh, to implement war results, but uh, actually is more oriented to make forecasting. How far are you to implement these results in the forecasting area? Well, um, I think we are not too far uh, with this work. Uh, we are able to to identify. Which grid could be valuable to 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 reproduce all the time scales, and I think that the most tricky thing is to to, to get a wharf running in a daily basis in an operational mode, as as it is said. And but but uh, I think that uh, this work uh, gives some light in the in the sense of. Uh, what are the the the, the um, let's say what are the the chances that a grid uh, can reproduce correctly or can give us uh, information valuable to uh, for example an, an operation of a wind farm or uh, a, a forecast of twenty four hours so for example if we if someone want, wants to to do to, to do a forecast uh, to twenty four hours, uh, we couldn't say that Mira two will give uh, some information that could reproduce the the wind speed uh, dynamics. So maybe a high resolution could be a, a nice choice. So I don't know if I answer uh, the, the the question or if there is something. And that I could. Uh... No, yes, you, you answer. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, uh, given that we are just uh, uh, past the the uh, uh, forty five um, um, minutes allotted to uh, Gustavo's presentation, I think that we are going to stop here. And uh, just uh, thank Gustavo again for for a very nice talk. Mm -hmm.